Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Well, today, in, in this liturgy, we heard the reading of the publican and a Pharisee, which is the kickoff of the tri Triodium, or Triodion, however you want to say it. Uh, three Sundays that uh, will lead up to uh, uh, Great Lent, the Forgiveness Sunday, and then the beginning of Lent, uh, when the whole temple will be uh, decked out in purple, and uh, we will begin our journey, our 40-day fast journey, uh, getting ready to celebrate or commemorate the Passion of our Lord during Holy Week. But today is the start. Uh, it's the starting of, of uh, showing us what uh, pride looks like and what humility looks like. We heard in the Gospel that this uh, Pharisee, uh, dressed in fine clothes. If you look at the icon, when you have a chance to look at the icon of the feast today, you'll see he is so well dressed, you know, and he's got all this going on for him. And he's making these big bold comments like, I'm glad I'm not like that guy in the back, that uh, vile sinner, uh, that uh, uh, publican. Tax collectors, they were looked on as very bad people because they usually fleece the people of their uh, money. Uh, they took what Rome wanted, plus they took a little for themselves, and it put a lot of uh, pressure on the uh, on the income of the families that had to uh, pay a tribute to Rome, you know, to the publicans. So this guy, this uh, Pharisee, is boasting how well he kept the law, and he, does, he ties, he does all these religious things, that his heart was far from the Lord. And you know, the Lord tells us that I will drive down the proud, and I will lift up the humble. So you look at this uh, this publican in the back of the temple, he wouldn't even look up into heaven. He kept beating his breast and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. And to me, that is the right attitude. The right attitude to have before God, because God is the King of hearts. He looks upon our heart. We can't fool the Lord. We can probably fool people around us or fool ourselves, but you're not going to fool the Lord because the Lord knows all and he's omnipotent, omniscient, he's everywhere, he knows all, and uh, puts up with a lot of stuff, let me say that. But um, we, we have to be careful in our uh, orthodoxy uh, of not setting up idols that, that are set up in the place of Christ. And you say, well, how can that be? Uh, you know, how can, I, how can I set up an idol unto the Lord uh, you know, in place of Christ? Well, just uh, stay with me for a moment. I got a couple points I want to I want to bring up uh, during uh, this sermon. Remember the uh, the self righteousness of the uh, of the Pharisee, and remember the lowliness of the publican, who was truly contrite, truly uh, wanting to have the Lord's mercy, where the other guy is boasting that I'm glad I'm not like him. So, the points I want to I'm going to talk about real quick are the idol of emotion. You see, well, how does that figure in? Well, let me uh, let me expound on that a moment. Our spiritual experience is not based on emotion. If you want to have an uh, experience, well, go out to the forest and you can have an experience out there. But we come here in, in, to celebrate the divine liturgy, and some people get bored with it. They say, "Well, what a you know, it's all repetition and all this." Well, th the Lord have mercy upon them. They understand where the liturgy comes from, Scripture, mm -hmm. and that we are supposed to you know we say things over and over and over. But aren't we supposed to read the Scriptures and meditate on the Scriptures and, and hide them in our heart that we don't sin against the Lord? And so the liturgy is our tool that God has given us through uh, either St. John Chrysostom, St. Basil, or, or St. Gregory of the pre-sanctified gifts, or even St. James liturgy, that, uh, that it leads us, it helps us lead us into the, into the true worship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, the liturgy is not about having an experience in a one-dimensional emotional sense. It is about joining with the rest of the body of Christ to worship God and to offer our whole lives to Him. 
that's what this is about, you know. Uh, that's what the liturgy is about. Not experience, but joining with the body of Christ. It's about a deeper experience of communion, of a living relationship with the Lord. The Holy Spirit is not a feeling, but a person. So you think about that. We, we know about the Father. You know, we, we, we say that the blood, Father, Son, Holy Spirit all the time. But we think about the Holy Spirit is not a feeling, but is a person. It's the third person of the Holy Trinity. The third person of the Trinity Trinity, we become more spiritual people by getting connected to the Holy Spirit and having a relationship with the Holy Spirit just as the apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And hopefully that we have all had that Pentecost experience of the realness of the Spirit of God that dwelling in our holy temples. These temples are are these, these temples of God are supposed to contain the Holy Spirit. That's one of the things. Another thing is uh, right actions. Well, I make the cross like this, you know, and I do this, and the priest makes the cross like that, and we come from the forehead down uh, to the lower part. We, we come over to the right side, and we come over. So I make my cross right, and I make cross, and I light candles, and I do all these things. But... Uh, Going through the motions without the heart is a very dangerous thing. And you can actually say, well, look what I've done for God today. Well, God doesn't care. He doesn't care. What he wants is your heart. And so we have a, 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 prod, a paradisus or, or a practice in the Orthodox Church of doing certain things. And so by doing certain things, uh, they should bring glory to Christ and not glory to ourselves. Not the boasting that I make my cross so perfectly when I make the sign of the cross, or I kiss the priest's hand, or, or, or take the end of the with care and all that, and take the Holy Communion. Are you prepared to take the Holy Communion without, uh, without act being accused by the Lord? Or, you know, so we can, we can even uh, become a, a idolatry in emotions. We can become, idol we can become idolaters in our, in our practice of being orthodox if her heart's not connected to it. Very dangerous. Or do we care more about the crumbs that drop off the end room on the floor than do we about the visitor that comes through the doors? Which is more important? I know it's, we don't want to drop any crumbs on the floor because it's blessed bread. But what about the person that comes through our doors uh, and Remember the words of Christ. He says, "Have we rejected the weightier, uh, weightier ma matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness?" Okay, justice, mercy, and faithfulness in the favor of uh, of the idol of right practice. And so, I'm not saying we don't do what we do because we everything we do should bring glory to Christ. Everything we do. And then there's an idol of being right. Well, I'm an Orthodox Christian. Uh, everybody else is, uh, you're going to split hell wide open because uh, we're following the true faith. And then there's that boast like that, like the Pharisee. He boasted in, uh, in all his good works. And so that's a dangerous thing to do. Yes, it's a wonderful thing that God has led us into the one holy apostolic church. Uh, over 2,000 year old tradition. And if we know it all comes from the Jewish tradition. It came from the Jewish, from Moses and the Mosaic Law. The form of our worship began with the Jews and now it's transcended into the Orthodox Church. That's why uh, the priests and the bishops best the way they do because it's a, it's a reminder uh, of uh, what was going on back in Moses' time with the high priest. But, We say, we belong to orthodoxy, the right belief, the right glory. Okay, it is a beautiful thing, but we should be humble that we belong to the orthodox faith. We should be humble because we are entering in, into a, uh, a tradition and, and look at all those 
saints that have gone before us, all those martyrs that have gone before us uh, and not denying Christ, but giving up their lives for Jesus Christ, becoming martyrs. So, it's all about the spiritual life, to live a spiritual life. Uh, prayer, fasting, we're, we're, you know, soon we'll be in, involved in a 40-day fast. But it can't be a fast of demons, it has to be a fast from our heart, not to the outer the outer practice of it. If your heart's far from God, he'll know that. So you can't fool, fool the Lord. We have to be careful that in our desire to live a spiritual life, we don't fall more into love with orthodoxy than we do our Lord. See, so see that see the problem there. We we can love our Orthodox Church, but it cannot replace the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord said, "I will share my glory with no one," and He means it. The idols that we have set up in our lives keep us from living an an authentic Orthodox uh, spiritual life. They keep us from humbly walking with our God because they keep us seeking things other than Christ Himself. Well, we got to do it right. We got to do this. We got to do that. And I understand all those things, but those things are good if they're in balance. So Jesus never said we needed to have an emotional experience before we could know Him, or that we had to check things off a to-do list and made my cross right i lit a candle and all the things that go with that that we could know him did not the lord say those who come to me i will not reject and the lord doesn't lie all he is is truth remember the, the, the when you stand stood before Pilate, Pilate says with his truth and there it was before him Christ, the embodiment of truth. Truth is not a concept. Tr truth is Christ. Done. And when he gave us the church on the Feast of Pentecost and sent forth the Holy Spirit, he did not want us to, us to then elevate the church as an object of our love. He wanted us to direct our lives to love him. So it's all about misdirection. See, the soul, Satan is so easy, so slick. He gets in there, and he can make you do all these things, and you think you're going to, you know, you're doing, you're pleasing God like the Pharisee, and you're not. But the guy in the back who's humble, contrite of heart, who is not even looking up to heaven, but beating his breast and say, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And that's our Jesus prayer. Can you say the Jesus prayer with a fullness of your heart? Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And say it all day long on your breath at work, when you drive in a car, don't get in an accident. But you know what I'm saying, uh, the focus is, God wants your heart. David was after his heart. Maybe that's why God loved David so much. And then even in our liturgy, we, we with the prayers of our liturgy, we, we say that God blesses those who bless Him. So God is looking for those to bless Him. And God says, I love those who love me. Why would he waste his time on someone who hates him? If you look at it in a, in a, in a human relationship, would you want to want love, love somebody that doesn't, doesn't like you or hate you? Can you imagine what that would be like to live in a situation where you love that person, but that person doesn't love you back? It's all one-sided. So God doesn't play that game. He warns us. He's given us Christ as the Redeemer and all that. You should know the basic gospel, what I'm trying to say here today, of the redemption of the redemptive works of Christ. But it all boils down to now is, do you love God? Do you love Him or not? Or do we have a form of love that, that makes us feel good but does, uh, does not please the Lord? So we have to self-examine. So during this uh, period of time, we're three weeks now out from... Uh, for, uh, the, the next Sunday, you know, and then third Sunday will be the uh, Forgiveness Sunday. We'll be asking each other to forgive. And I know we say, God forgives. And we say that as a, you know, it's like we're saying that in uh, our practice. God forgives. Yes, He does. But do you forgive? And that's what I want to know, is if I say, 
please forgive me, or do you really forgive me? Because did not Jesus say when his apostles questioned him about forgiveness, he says, if a guy uh, sins against you and he repents, forgive him. Okay, how many times are we supposed to do it? The Lord says 70 times 7, and that is an, that's an infinite number. So we can't, if God forgive, forgave us, He forgave us, who are we not to forgive each other? It's so unbalanced, in, imbalanced. Who do we think we are, you know? We, we think, are we, the, we like the Pharisee? We can snap our suspenders and say, look at me, how wonderful I am in the temple. But God is seeking a person like the publican in each one of us, the publican in our heart that we would have humility and let God lift us up. Don't lift yourself up. Let God lift you up because he will put you down if you're proud, if you have pride. So I, I, I just hope that, you know, I'm not trying to say, uh, don't be orthodox, be orthodox with all of your heart. See, not just a form of orthodoxy, but be orthodox with all of your heart and become, become a seeker of Christ and, and uh, in total in totalness, which you can do, and that's why the Holy Spirit is here to lead us into that true worship of who Christ is. Think about. I'll, I'll close with this. This is different between pride and humility. Without Christ, what are you? Really nothing. If you say I'm something, well then you're really nothing. With Christ, you're everything. You see that how it is. Christ is everything in us. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He is everything. And to deny Christ is to you unhinge from Christ, and now you try to work it out by yourself, and you will come up empty-handed because uh, you cannot. You know, did not Jesus keep the law? He was a perfect Jew. He kept the law. He kept every jot and tittle of the law. We can't. We are under the law of love. And Jesus says, what is the most? The love by, uh, the most important commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, my soul, my strength, everything, and love thy neighbor thyself. That is the royal commandment. He says, upon those two commandments hang everything. So, we've got our work cut out for us. We've got to do that. And the only way we can do it is with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And, and when the Spirit says, do this, don't, don't have a conversation with the Holy Spirit, do it. You'll find out it'll be a lot better for you if you just do it. Because uh, one way to quench the Holy Spirit is not to do what he says. Well, well he's not talking to me. Well, do like the gospel says. Keep bugging them. Eventually, they'll get an answer. It's like the, the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Even the puppies get that, you know, that story of the crumbs that I hope to do someday soon on, the, uh, on my radio show. But, who is the Alpha and the Omega? Christ. He is everything, and with, uh, with us being hidden in Him, we are everything to Him. So, don't detach yourself from Christ. Don't think you're something when you're not. Be humble before thy God, and He will lift you up. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.